Good morning, Aldersgate family. So good to see you. Please stand and join us in our first song, Raise a Hallelujah. My name is Nancy Huff, for those of you who do not know me, and I am happy to welcome you this morning to our combined service. We have just a few announcements, actually one major announcement to make from here at this time, and that is that we have our ministry fair 
Sunday, April 21st at 10 a.m. in the auditorium. We hope you'll come. It's a way for you to find out about all the ways that we serve in the community and at Aldersgate. Following that, on April 28th, will be our Ministry Academy after our Unified Worship Concert at 10 a.m. And that will be an opportunity for you to ask questions of some of the chairs to find out what the committees do so that you know where you would like to serve in the coming years. So also, uh, one second thing is we will have coffee after church today, so please come and join us. There are more announcements in your bulletin. And I would like to introduce Henry Dom, who is going to make an update announcement about the Catalyst for us. Good morning. Good morning. Aldersgate is fortunate to be accepted into the upcoming Catalyst Initiative. And I'm sure you've heard us talk about that before. We are one of several churches from the Peninsula Delaware and Baltimore Washington conferences who will be participating. The objective of the Catalyst Initiative is aligned with Aldersgate's desire to become a more vital congregation. Aldersgate's Catalyst core team will be leading Aldersgate's participation with our broader congregation being involved in various activities throughout the year-long program. Members of the core team are Pastor Kyung Hee, Lynn Conlin, Cheryl Merritt, Dan Shea, and me. The core team will be commissioned during both worship services next Sunday, April 14th. We will also be traveling to Baltimore for an all-day kickoff orientation on April 20th. This is an exciting season at Aldersgate, and we are grateful you are a part of it. Thank you. Please rise in spirit or in body for our prayer and following him. We will join together in this prayer. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ he is risen is indeed. indeed. We repeat our Easter shouts of surprise and joy again and again for news of your victory over powers of death and evil is news so startling, so amazing, so different from the news that bombards us day by day. Beyond our comprehension, you startle us again and again with resurrection life bringing grace and hope and joy. You, in your risen power, are shaping all our days, and so we praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join in hymn 310, He Lives.
Yes, he lives. Rejoice and rejoice. Happy Easter. You know, every Sunday is a little Easter. And let us share the peace and joy of the risen Christ together. And if you can, find those who you do not know. Let's pass the peace of the Lord. I know you. <laughs> I know you, but peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I know you, though. As we gather together here in peace and joy, we also, of course, gather together in prayer. Our lives as Christians, we know, centers around our relationship with our God, with our Lord Jesus, and that relationship itself is centered around prayer. And so join me together today as we share this vision which is unique to Aldersgate and which drives us all in the direction of prayer. Call to me, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. As we enter this season of Easter, we are looking outside of ourselves, looking to how we can reach out and care for those around us. And so please join me, first of all, as we pray for those who on our behalf are doing yeah, humanitarian work throughout the world, and most particular in Gaza. Lord Jesus, we know that you looked at the needs of the poor, and you lived with the poor, you lived with those that were rejected, leading to your own rejection. And we see those who, with courage beyond our comprehension, risk their lives to save the lives of others, to save the lives of those who simply want food, the most basic of human needs. We pray for those who have died this past week, both the humanitarian workers and the Palestinians and the Israelis who have died. All of their lives are precious in your eyes. Be with them and be with us to make us instruments of your love. We give thanksgiving for the rich fellowship, relationships, and community outreach which we all experienced as a community over the last seven days, both in preparation for and in celebration of and experiencing our rummage sale. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you called us friends, and you invited us to call each other friends in your name. We are your mystical body. We thank you for the love that is in this place. 
for the fellowship and communion that we all experienced with hard work and a lot of laughter and a deep sense of satisfaction as we gather together to serve those around us by offering them affordable necessaries for their life as we rejoice together with people, some coming back from the community after years and years. It's just such a delight to be together as community. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, for in your spirit we know that as we gather this week, Jesus was with us. And we look beyond our walls, Lord, to a, a darker place, but one that is not without light. Those who struggle with all kinds of addiction, we think of those who work with and care for those who are addicted. We particularly remember those who are living out their 12th step, having found recovery from their addiction they are themselves now going out to serve their brothers and sisters. Be with them all, and may we be also people of outreach who have known salvation and share salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand if you're able and join us in our next song, Do It Again. change to come knowing the battles won for you have never failed me yet your promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You never failed me yet. I know the night won't last. Your will will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. And my heart will sing your praise again. Promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet.
My name is Stacy DiGiacoma, and I was asked to speak about God's work in action, everyone in service. Well, if you were at church this past week, you saw a lot of that. People of all ages volunteered at the rummage sale doing all sorts of things. My personal experience as an adult was starting volunteering in the children's room at the rummage sale about 16 years ago. I said, I can help with that. I had young children at the time. I knew about toys, books, and baby clothes. I think the next year I said, I can help with that, and I was the co-chair of the children's room. Through the people I met and volunteered with at the rummage sale, I got involved in other groups at the church. Over the years, I said, I can help with that. I joined Hannah Circle, I joined the Altar Guild, the Journey Design Team, the Worship Committee, Youth Musical, each group connecting me to the next step and growing my connections in Aldersgate. It all started with me saying, I can help with that. Saying I can help is saying I can serve. With all the things I did, I had no special skills besides maybe being creative and a good organizer. But I was encouraged and supported by the people along the way. The support built my confidence to try new things. I currently serve as the president of United Women in Faith, the rummage sale co-chair, a GO team leader, and I'm on the lead team and a few other things. All those roles started with me, set, with me saying, I can help with that. On April 21st, we will have our ministry fair. I encourage everyone, no matter how long you've been at Aldersgate, to check out the ministry affair. Find out, just find out some information about a ministry you've never been involved with before. Whatever you're able to do, there are opportunities to fit your interest and your availability. New people in a ministry help create new ideas which help our church grow. Try something new. Say, I can help with that, which is saying, I can serve. So again, a huge thank you to all of you who did serve through your work, working at, your donating to, and your praying for the rummage sale yesterday and over the past weeks. Are you ready? Our preliminary gross earnings before expenses were $22,304.
A more detailed report will be in the next messenger, so open that email immediately. Thank you. Has our office come forward? Let us offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Let us make good our vows to the Most High. We pray that God would send the Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they might be blessed by God and multiplied by God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Our scripture lesson this morning is from John 21, verses 4 through 14. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, have you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord! As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Nancy. This morning, when I was praying at the sanctuary, the first words of my prayer somehow went like this. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. And oh, how I love Aldersgate. Can you answer my question? Do you love Jesus? Do you love Aldersgate? Not loud enough. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> today's gospel story happened at the Sea of Galilee. Remember, Jesus told the woman at the tomb after he was raised from the dead, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. They will see me. So Jesus came to the place of Jesus' uh, disciples' employment since they were fishers, fishersmen. This was the third time you heard Jesus appear to his disciples after his resurrection. So Peter and six other disciples got in a boat to go fishing. And they fished all night without catching a single fish. So at dawn, Jesus on the beach, whom disciples couldn't recognize yet, called to them, have you ever caught anything? And they said, not a thing. Then the stranger to them at this point suggested that they, you throw the net to the right of the boat. And they did, and they caught so many fish, and they had difficulty pulling the net into the boat. John, the disciple Jesus loved, told Peter, It's the Lord! Feel the excitement. At once, Peter, we know Peter, put his, who had taken off his clothes to work, and put his clothes back on, and jumped into the water to swim ashore where Jesus was. The others came to the shore in the boat. Now when they got out on land, they saw the first thing, you remember? A charcoal fire in place. What fish laid on it and bread. And Jesus asked them to bring some fish they caught. And Peter, of course, went to, it's Peter again, uh, went to the boat and dragged the net to shore. And we heard 
153 kinds of fish. And then Jesus cooked and invited them to have breakfast. Come and eat. And Jesus fed seven hungry disciples with bread and fish. And verse 12 points to the Lord as the host of the feast. And all present were kind of his welcome guests. Personally, I love the fact that one of the last stories in the Gospel of John is about a fish fry on the beach, served by whom? Jesus. And John mentions the world became flesh, made flesh at the beginning of the chapter, and the Gospel ends with this wonderfully down-to-earth story of disciples having a cookout with Jesus. What a heartwarming communion led by Christ in service. This community Jesus created for disciples is the very meaning of incarnation. So the world became flesh among them and dwelt among them, and they beheld his glory at the cook fire. And picture this warm and beloved community of disciples eating meal with, together with Jesus. I only wish I could be there. This meal on the beach looks like a lot like Holy Communion with Jesus presiding. And by breaking bread and eating fish together, their relationship was renewed. And Jesus intentionally showed up to cook and serve and teach them what it means to serve a community. And at this place, the renewal of the leadership of disciples took place. And you remember the last chapter of the Gospel of John actually uh, had the, uh, the di uh, dialogue between Jesus and Peter. The three times Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? You remember that. And three times Peter was told to feed and tend Jesus' sheep. This way, Peter, who denied Jesus three times, was reinstated as a leader of disciples, and the group of disciples at the cookout was, this earring I bought at the Romney sales when it fell. <laughs> I need that, it's beautiful. I'm gonna, <laughs> well, God is good uh, all the time. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, they were recommitted to follow the resurrected Jesus and re-empowered for a purpose right here at the cookout place. Right there, they received nourishment to create and serve the community of faith in the name of Jesus, we all know. This weekend, as you know, I had the first rummage sale experience. I mingled you know, with church members who were serving at each uh, room of sales and where, where they were serving with so much you know, hard and just tedious work. Guess what? They told me in unison with smiles on their faces, this is fun. I love to serve here. And you led me to think of how, what it what, you know, means, I mean, what shapes authentic community and how we are being reshaped in such an authentic community and how we 
grow with the cumulative small moments of impact that matter just as much as big, you know, the monumental moments in our ministry and mission. Christian community is all about God's incarnated love. We have it here at Aldous Gate, this extraordinary community and church. Let me tell you, I have huge respect and admir admiration for all of you and leaders here at Aldous Gate who have been ceaselessly serving through thick and thin without yielding to the temptation of leaving the church during the most difficult, challenging times. When I came to Aldous Gate last July, I felt the church was in great need. But guess what? This is a little emotional, but those who are so dedicated and so committed with love have greatly inspired me to keep going to serve because of the power of community in service you exemplified by your faith and love. I give you all and leaders my heartfelt thanks for your amazing love and steadfast service. Because of you, I have not given up despite any difficulties. And thank you. All this gate, be attentive to the little signs of connection as Stacy shared through service and growth. Celebrate them. Celebrate them and take time to count these small victories that are slowly and meaningfully changing the world. Our work has impact. Even when it's not obvious and even when it's not saluted with fireworks. You know, every generation has work to do for God and for God's kingdom. And people are touched in small and big ways through our service and work. As for me, I learned to taste the joy and goodness of God when I started to serve the Sunday school a long time ago <laughs> and back in my home church and it was a big church with 3,000 members in worship attendance so they had a big Sunday school with more than 150 students and I had a very demanding career at that time and the church was in great demand of teachers and administration as you can imagine and but I just felt inadequate in serving the Sunday school and I thought to myself and can you don't have the proper knowledge of the Bible enough to teach the kids nonetheless I felt strong not just to serve so I chose to serve as a Sunday school teacher and started to study the Bible regularly and then I learned to connect parents and kids by calling them on Saturday and uh, when I am not working and like letting them know about uh, class activities and the Bible lessons and I asked them if they have prayer concerns. And I learned how to follow up with that. And I, when I started to develop these connections, joy of serving multiplied. And I realized far later that uh, this service became a, the first window of finding my call from God to be a pastor. We grow by serving. We grow 
our love, joy, and contentment in Christ by serving God and the community beyond us and in spite of us. I love what uh, Frederick Buchner said, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Can we recite one together? The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. So our precious church, Aldersgate, needs your service. So take time to complete the spiritual gift inventory, and if you don't know, uh, just call the office and to discern your gifts. So as Nancy said, do not fail to stop in, drop in the ministry fair and walk through the fair by giving your close and prayerful attention to all the ministries and services going on at our church. And then sign up for any place God is calling you without fail. And pray to God while you walk through the fair, like God show me where I can serve by using my, the gifts you have given to me. And where is it the place of serving where my deepest joy and the church's deep need, need meet? And then the nominations and lead, leadership team will contact you to, after you sign up, and then uh, they will contact you, and then you can uh, uh, be equipped with specific information at the Ministry Academy on April 28th. You and I know our society is captive to forces of individualization. And families make increasing individualized choices when it comes to schooling children and with charters, magnets, and, and you know, private schools, and record numbers of homeschooled children. Happiness, virtue, virtue, and the good life are becoming as privatized as our economics. And what people think they are responsible for creating personal good instead of seeking the, the well-being, welfare of all. Now, individualization tells us how social structures and social institutions like families, community, workplace, and even in religious institutions have become less influential in shaping our identities and life choices. And our identity seems to be created through individual choices and the sub-chosen like uh, affinity circles to which people belong. So what do we what do we what does God call us to do in God's incarnational love to influence families and communities and our next generations. I love this story. And an English poet, Samuel Taylor Coolidge, once had a discussion with a, a man who believed that children should not be given formal religious instruction, but should be free to choose their own religious faith when they reached maturity. So Coleridge did not express his disagreement, but later invited the man into his neglected garden, and the man said, do you call this a garden? And Coleridge responded, I mean, he said, the man said, there's nothing but weeds here. Well, Coleridge replied, I did not wish to infringe upon the liberty of the garden in any way. <laughs> I was just 
giving the garden a chance to express itself. God doesn't want our church to be a deserted garden. And you and I need to be intentional, good gardeners for all the families, communities, and next generations. So notice today who God on the lines to serve and position yourselves where God on the lines somebody who needs your service. Obey when God shows the place to serve his church with your passion and your own gifts. Fulfill God's incarnated love where you are. Amen. Now, I'm going to invite you to the Sea of Galilee where Jesus and, and seven disciples had a cook out <laughs> by uh, just like a Holy Communion. You have um, the liturgy uh, printed in your bulletin. Just please follow along with me, imagining that cookout. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breath, breathed into the breath of life. When you, we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy. Holy are you, and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this, in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead. He was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup 
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. For us, your Holy Spirit, on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world with Christ until Christ comes. In final victory, we feast and, in, and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us recite the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we Give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The table is open to everyone, and the Holy Communion with Jesus at this place will do something miraculous, empowering us and repurposing us. So let's have that faith as we approach this table, and you can uh, follow the the usher's guidance and come through the center aisle and go back to the, your seat and we will share at the same time the, this meal uh, as uh, I direct you. And also there is a green basket uh, which goes to the, uh, the needy uh, through Samaritan Fund if you like to give. And we do have gluten-free bread and if you want to have gluten-free, please Ask us and we will serve. Come with anticipation. The body and blood of Jesus Christ for you. Jesus loves you. <laughs> the body and blood of Jesus Christ for you. No, uh, Jesus loves you. The 1943 World War II vest on. <laughs> oh, really? You can explain to me later. I draw the body and blood of Jesus Christ for you. Ryan, the body and blood of Jesus Christ for you.
Let us take the body of Christ together now. The love of Christ we take. Now let us take the blood of Christ shed for you so we may know his endless love. Please join me in the prayer that is printed on the bulletin. Now, eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us rise for the closing song together. Hymn number 317. one of my uh, favorite songs. You might have read uh, my uh, article this past month in the newsletter, but one Christian CEO wakes up every morning asking God, God, how can I help 
great people to do great things. And I pray every morning, God, how can I help great people at Aldous Gate to do great things? Let us pray together and shine your light and the entire world and community will know Jesus is alive. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen.